Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. In just a few moments, we will be joining Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeves, Sr., Senior Pastor of Good Shepherd Baptist Church with today's message. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon.
for this opportunity to be with you this morning and thank God for our dear pastor, Pastor Jeffrey L. Rees, for this opportunity and this great privilege it is of mine to stand in his stead. Pray certainly God's blessings on him and his travels and certainly pray that uh, the Lord would bless his family and keep them. What a, what a wonderful gift to this congregation. Amen? Amen. And so we thank God for them. And certainly it is good just to be here good 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 to be here amen and so in the interest of time I'm gonna move ahead with my assignment is that all right amen amen come on let's pray gracious and loving God we thank you for this day thank you God for this sacred moment pray God that you would speak to our hearts oh God God I pray that you would help us God to focus our attention exclusively on you for these few moments together. Speak, Lord. God, give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Pray, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would save somebody today. That you would set somebody free today. Hallelujah. And so we bless your name, God. Hallelujah. May the words of my mouth and the testimony of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God. For you are my strength and my redeemer. It is in the precious and powerful name of your son, Jesus Christ, that I pray. Amen and amen, amen, amen. Our scriptural text this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Amen. If you would, won't you stand? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Isaiah 55. Hallelujah. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 3 and verses 6 through 11. I'll be reading for your hearing through in the New Living Translation. Isaiah 55, 1 through 3, and then 6 through 11. Amen, amen, amen. And it reads, is anyone thirsty? Come and drink, even if you have no money. Come, take your ch choice of wine or milk. It's all free. Why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does you no good? Listen to me, and you will eat what is good. You will enjoy the finest food. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen and you will find life. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the unfailing love I promised to David. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God, for he will forgive generously. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, 
and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. The rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out, and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. I'd like to preach for, on the subject, an irresistible invitation. Recently, I bought a puppy. His name is Buddy. I'm learning a lot from Buddy, and I'd like to share one of my observations with you. In the morning, after a fitful night's rest, maybe that's more a description of my rest, but nonetheless, that's another story. The first thing that Buddy does is drink water. On some mornings, he drinks a little, and on some mornings, he drinks a lot. Is anybody thirsty? What causes your thirst? Jogging, sleep, work, a nice meal, a snack, or just the passing of time? Perhaps you find yourself always thirsty. So you reach for your beverage of choice. You guzzle soda after soda, brew after brew, bottle after bottle, yet you find yourself still thirsty. It's said that we can live for a while without food, but not long without water. Our thirst must be satisfied if we're to survive. What are you thirsty for? In our text, we see that among the Israelites, there are some who are thirsty and they receive an irresistible invitation. Come and drink, even if you have no money. Come, take your choice of wine or milk. It's all free. It seems that those here in the text have been wasting their resources on that which provides no nutritional value. It didn't nourish them in any way. They seem to be trying to satisfy their hunger and thirst in unproductive ways. For many of us, that's our story too. It's right here in the text, it says, why spend your money on food that does not give you any strength? Why pay for food that does you no good? You see, the Israelites were in Babylonian exile. Exile, barred from their native land for punitive reasons. They were banished to Babylonia because of their sin. They were removed from the land that gave them their identity. It's like you and me. If we're not careful, we can find, we, we, we can be free one minute and then find ourselves imprisoned literally behind bars or figuratively bound by some addiction or some behavior or some sabotaging habit or some relationship that draws us from who we were meant to be. Sin will place us in exile, estranged from God. The Israelites were the people of God. The people God called into being, living in the land, flowing with milk and honey. This was God's plan for their lives, their destiny. But instead of enjoying the blessings of the Lord, they chased after idols time and time again. And so God sent an enemy to conquer them. While they were in exile, as opposed to cultivating their relationship with God, they pursued other gods of the Babylonian people. They abandoned what they knew and began to rely totally on their own efforts, their own limited resources, and the impoverished resources of the community in which they live. Does that sound familiar? It sounds like many of us. 
God has a plan for each one of us, but time after time, we find ourselves chasing after idols. You know, buying Powerball tickets and consuming junk, junk food, junk TV, junk social media, just junk with no nutritional or spiritual value. Spending valuable resources of time and money on stuff that does not satisfy. In preparing for this sermon, I found that some scholars believe that the person who is speaking in these early verses is not God, but it is Zion, the, their native land that God had created for them, the place that God had called them to, the place of plenty, the place of destiny, calling them home. For many in this room, you're being called home. Many of you know that in September, I lost one of my nephews. He was shot and killed. He was raised in a church home, grew up knowing the Lord, and at times it seemed he chased idols. Beware of seducing spirits. Their assignment is to draw you away, to exile you from your purpose and your assignment. On many occasions, we would talk to him about coming home, not physically, but come home to his place in God. That's the beautiful thing about God. God will put people in your life that will remind you of who you are and who you are meant to be. If we're going to live on purpose and fulfill our destiny, we must recognize that God is extending an invitation. It's like no other invitation. It's a no strings attached invitation, an irresistible invitation from God. But like any invitation, a response is required. Come on, we get invitations all the time. However, if we were to roll back the tape of our lives, it's safe to say that there are some invitations that we shouldn't have accepted. Come on, some of us have, some invitations have led us into temptation. Some have taken us to places that we should not have gone. Some have caused us headaches and heartaches. Some invitations have caused us to do things that we shouldn't have done. They've caused us our freedom, placed limits on where we can go and who we can talk to. Some invitations have been against the plan of God for our lives. Some invitations have cost us too much. If we're going to respond to God's irresistible invitation, first, we must come. We have to RSVP. Respond, s'il vous plaît. Where's Mr. Richardson? Amen. Come on. Amen. Trying to use a little French. That's all right. <laughs> but nonetheless. <laughs> But anyway, so some, some of these invitations that we receive, of course, when you receive an invitation, you should get back to the host and let them know if you're going to come. Well, anyway, that's the way they used to do it today. People just show up. They don't, they don't care about whatever it is. Uh -huh. He says that, come, all of you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come and buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. An irresistible invitation. I like a God who says, come. <laughs> he says, come, I have everything you need. Come, I have everything you need and it's free. Come on, it doesn't cost you a dime. Come. <laughs> he said, listen, come to the waters. Waters refreshes. Water washes. Water cleanses. Water cleans. Hallelujah. When you're thirsty, drink water. Come on, I know that sounds simple, but when you're thirsty, come on, you better find you some water. Come on, where my nurse is at? Come on, somebody know that water is good for you. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and so listen, it's free. It doesn't cost you a thing. You can run to the one who can satisfy your hunger and quench your thirst. We must come to God that we may live. Second, in responding to the invitation, not only must we come, we must listen. Some of us don't like to listen to nobody. Okay, I know that wasn't good grammar and all that, but we don't like to listen to nobody. We know everything. But God says, listen, listen to me, and you will eat what is good, and you will enjoy the finest food or the richest affair. Many times we let the world define what the richest affair is. 
money, fame, looks, love, relationships. And so we begin to chase after them the wrong way. Slinging drugs on the backs of those in our communities. Playing the Powerball. Oh, I think I mentioned that one one. Okay, <laughs> hooking up with this one and that one. Again, we let the world decide what's good. If we're going to answer the invitation, we must allow God to speak to us. Verse 3 says, come to me with your ears wide open. Listen, and you will find life. It's an everlasting covenant I will make with you. I will give you all the unfailing love that I promised David. David was the king of Israel, God's chosen, his anointed. God loved David. He was a man after God's own heart. God made a covenant with David and that one in his lineage would always be on the throne. How many of you know that God keeps his word? Jesus Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven. Over there in the Gospel of John, we find these words. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them and I will love them and I will reveal myself to each of them. Is anybody thirsty? For the revelation of God. Then we can be like Moses. Who said. Lord show me your glory. God said to him. But I can't show you everything. Can't show you my face. But I'll set you in a rock. In the cleft of the rock. So that you might not see my glory. But you see just a glimpse of me. Every now and then, I realize we can't see his face. But I'm thirsty for him. Come on, I'm thirsty for him. Can't see his face. But every now and then, I like to see just a glimpse of God. Every now and then. Hallelujah. And so, so it is. God was preparing them. Preparing them to go back to the place that he had originally prepared them for their native land as you prepare to go back to the place I've called you listen to my words hallelujah when you prepare to go back make sure you're not listening to naysayers when you go back to the place that God has prepared for you make sure that you don't listen to those who are chasing idols when you go back to the place that are prepared for you make sure you're not listening to Satan the enemy Day in and day out, we listen to everyone else. God says, listen to me for what is good. God invites us to be in relationship with him, the maker of heaven and earth. He is committed to loving us. When no one else will, God loves us. He loves us with an everlasting love. But we must be in relationship with him. Thirdly, to respond to the invitation means that we must actively seek the Lord. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Call on him now, not when you say you can get yourself together. Call on him now while he's near. Notice the word actively there. With the same kind of energy that you pursue the things of the world, we must redirect our energy to seek the Lord. Fourth, we must change our ways and banish the very thought of wrongdoing. Apparently in the text, we find the fact that they had been making some mistakes. They must have made some mistakes. Here we find these words. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. The wicked are those who are unrighteous, those who are not doing things God's way, the right way. Let those who are depending on themselves forsake their ways. Let them who are trying to satisfy themselves in ungodly ways forsake their ways. And when we do, God promises to reveal himself to us. Amen. And so we look forward to seeing God. But we see God based on our obedience. God says, let the wicked 
the one who has sinned, the one who has his or her own agenda. You do know that sin is following your own agenda and not the agenda that God has for you. God says, let the wicked forsake the, his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. To forsake means to leave, to give up, to abandon our ways that we are led, that have led us to wrongdoing. Like cutting corners, gossiping about others, hurting others, using others, scandalizing other people's name. You know, running folk down, running folks' name down. We must abandon these destructive ways and the self-defeating thoughts that keep us bound that leads us away from the Lord. If we do this, if we obey his commands, God promises to love us and to have mercy on those who forsake their wicked ways. But not only that, he promises to forgive us of all the wrong that we have done. God is full of mercy. In Isaiah 43, it says, I, yes, I alone will blot out your sins for my sake and will never think of them again. Hear me now. We may have to live with the consequences of what we've done, but God promises to abundantly pardon us. It's one thing to have man's forgiveness, but it's a whole new ball game to be forgiven by the Lord. It says it right here in the text. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. With man, we can't be sure that forgiveness will come, but with God, his word and his ways can be trusted. He says the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and food for the hungry. It is with my word. It is the same. I send it out and it always. Come on, somebody say always. It always produces fruit. It will accomplish all that I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. God's word will not return to him empty, but accomplish the assignment that it has. Accept God's irresistible invitation to be in relationship with him through his son, Jesus the Christ. He was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us are like sheep having strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own agenda. Yet the Lord laid it on him, the sins of all of us. He was oppressed and treated harshly. Yet he never said a mumbling word. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was laid in a borrowed tomb. But I'm so glad on the third day. Hallelujah. He got up with all power in his hand. He rose up as king of king and lord of lords. I'm so glad. Hallelujah. That he got up. And because he got up, he's, he enabled me to be able to stand here today. Because he got up. Come on. We can sit in here this day. Because he rose. Hallelujah. All power in his hand. He enabled me to love my brother. And love my sister. Come on, because he got up. Hallelujah. We can give him glory in a place on a Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Because he lives. Hallelujah. So as we move forward, we're now in this time of Lent. Hallelujah. This time of reflection. That we can reflect about our relationship with the Lord. Gives us a time to repent. So when the Babylonians were asked to come back to their home country, that's an act of repentance. It's an exhibition or a show that God had forgiven them and brought them back to the original place and purpose for their lives. That's true for you and it's true for me. During this time of Lent, this time of reflection, I want to encourage you. To accept his invitation. 
accept his invitation to return to who you were purposed to be. Doing what God has called you to do. Saying what God has called you to say. No more excuses. Accept the irresistible invitation of God. And then one day, we can shout. Come on, the trees will clap their hands. Hallelujah. And when you do, come on, when you accept the invitation, the mountains and the hills will burst forth with song. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Come on, and we'll join in on the celebration. When you decide, make this the day, that you decide this is the day that I'm going to accept the invitation. One that is irresistible. One that I just can't refuse. Come on, if you've never accepted the invitation, won't you do that today? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Accepting the irresistible invitation. Hallelujah. 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 Perhaps it is that you know that today is the day. It's the day that is meant for you to accept the invitation. I want to extend this invitation today. If you find yourself hungering and thirsting after the things of God, never can be satisfied. Tried everything else, but nothing quenches your thirst Satisfy your hunger. Come on, I want to invite you to come. Invite you to come to a relationship with the Lord. Won't you come? Come on, why don't we stand all over the house? Our ministers and deacons are here to receive you. This is your day. This is your hour. No more excuses as to why you haven't accepted his invitation. He says, when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. He says, come, hear me, listen to me, and I'll tell you what is good. A lot of bad stuff going on in the world, but if you want to know what's good, come, come, come irresistible invitation. Come on, won't you come? Perhaps it is the case that you've been hanging out here for a little while. Coming around here, just hanging out. Already know the Lord. But haven't made a commitment to Christ. Come on, why don't you come? You know that this is the place that God has planted you. The original place that he has in your destiny. Come on, why don't you come? Come on, seek him while he can be found. Come to him while he's near. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't we raise it up? Come on. Won't you come?
to come. I invite you now to the altar. Amen. God for your goodness thank you God for extending a, an irresistible invitation one that is life changing so God we thank you God I pray that you would help us to make the necessary adjustments in our lives that we can align ourselves with your purpose and your will and your way Help us to see ourselves in your light, God. Pray, God, that you would help us to move forward. Certainly admitting that sometimes, God, we make choices that cause us to be in exile. Away from you, oh God. Forgive us, oh God. Ask God that you would just bless your people, God. Bless these who have gathered around the altar, God. Help them to know, God, that every Thing they need is in you bless them oh God whatever they stand in the need of God pray God that you would meet them at their point of need pray God for that mother who's worried about that child pray God for the one who's looking for a job whatever the need God I pray you would meet it somebody's body is wrecked with pain I pray God you would bring healing God Somebody is confused, God. I pray you would give them peace, God. Hallelujah. Whatever is needed, God. Pray, oh God, that you would provide it, God. So, God, we bless you. We thank you for all things. Thank you for the word, God. Pray, God, that it will fall on good ground. Hallelujah. Take root, God. Help us, God, to come to you, God. Help us, God, to listen to your word, God. Help us, God, to seek you actively, God. Help us, God, to forsake our ways and every wrong thought, God. Be with us this day as we leave this place, oh God. Protect us and watch over us, God. Bless us to return at the appointed hour, God. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. May we go out in joy and return, God, in peace, God. Hallelujah. Now unto him who's able to extend irresistible invitation. Now unto him, who's able to present us faultless before his glorious presence with exceeding joy. Now unto him, be glory and dominion and majesty and power, both now and forever and evermore. Somebody say amen. Amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us today for Good Shepherd Services. Giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or using the app, click the Give Online icon. Follow us on social media on Facebook at Good Shepherd Baptist, Twitter and Instagram at Good Shepherd BC. And the Good Shepherd app is yet another great tool to keep connected. Download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. We air every Sunday on Fox Richmond at 7.30 a.m. Please watch and support the broadcast. Good Shepherd Baptist Church, 
2223 South Crater Road in Petersburg, Virginia. You may call at 804-732-5969. Building a church, developing a community, expanding services, and impacting lives. We thank you for the support of this ministry. See you next time.